Welcome to the Queen City of Cincinnati as Fox Sports Ohio presents Interleague Baseball, the final interleague game of this 2012 season. It's the Cincinnati Reds against the Minnesota Twins, and it is the rubber game of the three-game set as the Reds try to win the series against the Twins. Hi, hello, and welcome to Cincinnati, everyone, along with the Cowboy Jeff Brantley, George Grand. You know, it has been such a special weekend. We hope you've been with us. You just had a chance to see it on our pregame show with Jeff Picoro and Jim Day. But, you know, you cannot underestimate what this weekend has meant to the people that are here. No, you, you really can't, George. And it, and it resonates through the players, through the fans, through the front office. Uh, all of the people that are involved in this organization know how much it means to both Dan Dreesen and to Sean Casey to go into the the Reds Hall of Fame and, and how it's presented. I mean, it is first class from the top to the bottom, and this banquet tonight is going to be phenomenal. Well, yesterday, Johnny Cueto took that another level as he pitched brilliantly, and today the Reds hope that Mike Leake can do the same. Well, he has really thrown the ball well as of late, George. Uh, last seven starts, he's only given up 14 earned runs, uh, 2.93 earned run average. I think a lot of it has to do now with the fact that they have moved the rotation. They have split up both Bronson Arroyo and Mike Leake. Instead of pitching them back-to-back, -back, they have now moved them from one to the other and put Latos in between. You see Scott Diamond, the left-hander, he'll be facing the Reds today. He is Minnesota Twins' best pitcher right now. Reds have used five starters this year. The Twins have used ten starters. That's been a big difference in these two teams. How about the offense? We've got that to talk about and a whole lot more. It's the Reds and the Twins, the final of the three-game set. Reds baseball on Fox Sports Ohio. Can the Reds put some numbers up like yesterday? Stay tuned.
Cincinnati Reds. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Smoking day at Great American Ballpark. Today's weather report brought to you by Thompson Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Drain Cleaning. Here's Scott Demick. Hello, everyone. I'm meteorologist Scott Demick. If you enjoyed yesterday's game at Great American Ballpark, I expect you to like today's game. It will be another warm and toasty one for the first pitch at 110, 85 degrees. I think we're partly to mostly cloudy for the seventh inning stretch with the temperature reaching into the upper 80s. And we'll have a high tomorrow around 90 degrees. Make sure you stay nice and hydrated. The humidity will be up just a bit today compared to yesterday. Go Reds. Enjoy the game. Thanks, Scott. Go Reds. That's what Brandon Phillips has done this weekend. Had a base hit in game one of the series, and boy, was he big yesterday, Cowboy. Well, the one thing that he has done, George, is he has really concentrated on driving the ball into that right center field gap. When he gets a fastball, whether it's in or out, he's taking the ball the other way. If you leave it up in the zone, well, that's what he does with it. He hits it out of the ballpark. But if you hang him a breaking ball, that's the ball he pulls to the left field wall. When he's at his best, he'll go to center and right. And if you look at the numbers, he's at his best right now. Well, anytime that you can have this type of spray chart where you're getting hits both left, center, and right, you know that your balance, you know that your swing is exactly where it needs to be. And it also means that your average is rising and your wins come as well. Well, the Reds won last night, hopeful of another performance today that can send Ron Gardenhire and the Twins on the road after a series win for Cincinnati. It's the Reds and the Twins, Interleague Baseball, next on Fox Sports Ohio. to you by the 2012 Ford F-150 Motor Trend Truck of the Year by Cincinnati USA. Let us be your travel guide to Cincinnati USA. Visit CincinnatiUSA.com. And by Skyline Chili. Game time is Skyline time. Stop by your favorite Skyline Chili today. Beautiful day and a beautiful weekend for baseball here at Great American Ballpark. Let's check the starting lineup. Our AXA starting lineup from AXA Advisors for Ron Gardenhire and the Twins. Ben Revere, Kentucky native, will lead it off. He's had a good series and he's played well this month. Darren Mastroianni will bat in the number two spot. He comes in at 200. Joe Maurer and Justin Morneau are back in the lineup together for the first time in a while. You know that puts a smile on the face of the manager of the Twins. That's the Twins batting order. Here's Mike Leak, Cowboy. 
As always with Mike Lee, it is all about keeping the ball down in the strike zone. He has done that superbly over his last seven starts, and that's the reason he is really starting to come along. They have moved him behind Johnny Cueto. They have put Matt Latos back a day and then inserted Bronson Arroyo right in front of Homer Bailey. That way you split up your two right handers that are more of your breaking ball pitchers leak and Arroyo and you've got your power guys on the outside. So you translate that to mean that Matt Latos will go tomorrow against Giovanni Gallardo when minute Milwaukee comes to town. A Royal goes on Tuesday against Marco Estrada and Homer Bailey will go Wednesday against Zach Greinke as the Milwaukee Brewers come to town and then the Reds head west for an 11 game 11 day West Coast trip. The toughest one they've had this year and the toughest in years to the West it Coast. It is always a difficult trip out there. One two blooped into right that's a base hit so Revere is on he had his first four game four hit game of uh, the year on Friday night here and he's been a trigger to this offense he can steal a base he's stolen 14 of them let's check your four defensive alignment for the Reds some changes today Ludwig in left Heisey in center Jay Bruce in right Todd Frazier in at third as Scott Rowland gets the afternoon off Valdez gives Kozar a day off. Brandon Phillips, Joey Votto on the right side, and Devin Mezzarocco catches Mike Leak. That's your forward defensive alignment. And Mezzarocco can throw if you give him an opportunity from the mound. Leak, if Leak is quick to the plate, they will get Ben Revere if he attempts to steal. That's how good Mezzarocco's arm is. Revere stole two bases on. Friday Johnny Cueto handled him pretty good yesterday. The key is keeping him off the bases of course. He was 0 for 4 yesterday after four hits on Friday. Comes out of Lexington born in Atlanta. Was the Gatorade High School Player of the Year about those six years ago. Outstanding young prospect and if you talk to Ron Gardenhire he likes Revere. He thinks he can be a key to this ball club. Darren Mastroianni gets the chance to start today in the number two spot and the other guys you like we've seen it too Brian Dozier at short has been outstanding in this series Cowboys so there are some good young players what that man right there Ron Garden hires looking for is pitching well Mastriani not Mastriani but Revere has got good speed in the top of the order and the one thing that you love to have if you are garden hire is to have somebody that can get on base doesn't strike out which Revere does not he has tremendous speed to set the table for Maurer, Willingham, and Morneau. Now, the object is to get those two left-handed hitters healthy to help out Willingham and then get some decent pitching. Hold, hold, hold. That's what he does. They drop a bunt down. They'll have to go to first. They will for the out. Two to three sacrifice, so the... Leadoff hitter Revere is in scoring position down at second base. Mastriani gets the job done, and here's Maurer talking to Ron Gardenhire. He said, Every day I come to the park with my fingers crossed as I walk in, hoping that I can put Maurer and Morneau in the lineup at the same time. It has not happened often enough for them this year. Well, you when you talk to Gardenhire, the, the one thing that you can see in his face is just the the disappointment in in the injury issues from from both of his big sluggers. Down to second. Phillips has it. Going to third will be Revere. There's your second out of the inning. Mauer played first yesterday after coming off not the disabled list but a stint out of the lineup because of a collision that he had with Ricky Weeks and Ricky Weeks is like a brick wall. He ran into his thigh a deep thigh bruise still not a hundred percent. But he's back in the lineup and for the first time back in the lineup behind the plate catching. You could see where that pitch was from Mike Link. It was much lower than the pitch that Ben Revere hit. Here's the left fielder Josh Willingham. These three guys in the middle of this order, George, Maurer, Willingham, Morneau, they can they can be as tough as any three, four and five hitters in anywhere in Major League Baseball. 
Willingham's given them good balance, and he's a you know, quiet leader, solid guy in the clubhouse. And that's one of the things that they're looking for. Terry Ryan is back as the general manager, and you know, after four or five years of a drought in drafting and in developing players, you know, he'll get the wheels back on the track after a couple of years. One of the best general managers around in the game these days. He's been an awfully good RBI man for a club that has really struggled offensively. Three oh. When you look at the Reds, three, four, five, Votto, forty five, Phillips, forty four, Bruce, forty six runs batted in. And that's what the kind of production you would expect here. But Maurer's at thirty three, Morneau's at thirty three, and there's Willingham leading the club with forty seven. Sneaks it in for a strike, full count three two. Well, Willingham was headed to first base. He had already bent down to take that shin guard off of his left ankle. And that baby stayed right on the inside corner. In the air to right, hit pretty good, but it'll stay in the park. There is Bruce. Jay will squeeze it, lead off base hit, no harm. Souvenir for the fans in right. Reds would love to see one from a red bat coming up next. Let's check your AXA advisors starting lineup for Dusty Baker, the manager of the Cincinnati Reds. A couple of changes. Chris Heisey in the leadoff spot. That'll mean the shortstop today will give Zach Cozart the day off, so Wilson Valdez will get the start. Joey Votto, Brandon Phillips, Jay Bruce, as per usual. Ryan Ludwig will be in left. That'll move Todd Frazier to third as Scott Rowland gets the start of this day off. Here's a first pitch swing from Heisey. Center field, pretty good. Going back at the wall, hauled in by Revere. He turned the wrong way, but speed is a wonderful thing, especially on defense, and his speed allowed him to catch up with this cowboy. It is amazing to watch a guy with that type of ability from the waist down. His legs are so quick, and because of his height, he just moves around. He just darts one way to the other. And you're right, he was turned all which away and still <laughs> made it look like an easy catch. Which way, that away, and it finally found leather. Good swing by Heisey. Anywhere else in the ballpark, he's got a home run. Here's Valdez, 225, no homers, eight knocked in. Wilson gets the start at short. He's been all over the place. Uh, and Dusty even started him in center field in New York. And he played well in center field. Dusty trying to give his extra people at bats. And it's so tough, especially when you're playing in American League cities, knowing that the Reds could not double switch and they wouldn't be 
playing with nine on the field with the DH. He gave Wilson the extra at bats he needed by starting him in New York. One ball, two strikes. Got him. There's your four defensive alignment for the Minnesota Twins. Josh Willingham in left, Revere brilliant speed in center. He moves from right to center as Span gets the afternoon off. And Mastriani is over and right. Trevor Bluth at third, Dozier and Casilla. Alexi Casilla is your second baseman, and Justin Morneau is back at first with Maurer behind the plate. That's your forward defensive alignment. How about Scott Diamond, Cowboy? Well, he started the season in the minor leagues. He's only making his 10th start of the year, but he has thrown the ball really well. His first seven starts, all quality starts, four of which were outings where he did not give up an earned run, didn't give up a run, period. Uh, his last couple of starts, uh, both coming against Pennsylvania teams in the National League, Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, re respectively, he's given up four runs, one six inning against the Phillies and five and a third against the Pirates. Fastball, slider, a curveball occasionally, and he'll change speeds with that curveball, and he's got to change up as well. The one thing that he does do is he throws strikes. He is not going to hurt himself. And you can see the change in the speed on that breaking ball there. The one you get from Joey Votto, the swing, and then that one had a little more velocity to it. Just like Justin Morneau, he is a Canadian-born player facing another Canadian, of course, Joey Votto, and he'll get the best of Joey this time. The Reds go quietly one, two, three in inning number one. To the second we go, here comes Morneau. Now he's back playing every day is um, testimony to, I think, uh, how determined he was because, I mean, there were stretches there where I'd imagine on his own he was worried about not playing anymore. Um, and I think that for him to continue to, uh, you know, just grind it out and get out there, even when I'd imagine at times he feels the symptoms, uh, is really impressive to me. Joey Votto on Justin Morneau, who steps into the batter's box. First pitch swing and popped up. Valdez will take charge. Today's storylines are brought to you by Elk and Elk. Serious lawyers for serious injuries. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. Joey and Justin, great respect for each other. Two Canadians, yes, but even more importantly, the way they conduct themselves. And what he's talking about, you name it, Morneau has had it. Uh, you know. Every, about everything you can imagine, especially the concussions that certainly have been a factor. He's had back issues. He's had neck surgery on the nerves of the neck after the concussions. Almost a whiplash effect, if you will. 
and Joey said as much there and in, in the conversation that I had with Joey he said you know you don't realize how much of a toll it takes on a human being especially as a hitter when you get hit that many times and then you got to climb back in there because you've got to fight that mentally much less physically. Two balls and one strike. You, know, you, you go back to his MVP year of 2006, 34 homers, 130 knocked in. At 31 homers in 2007, 23 in 2008, and 30 in 2009, and then the injuries caught up to him. You take that kind of production out of the lineup, tough to replace it. Well, it is, and the first time that he was hit in the head was in 2005, and there were five other times that that followed. Full count three two. And pitchers on the other team, they don't feel sorry for you. They they use that to their advantage. Good bounce back from Mike Lee, huh? No, while we're talking about north of the border, Larry Walker. Maybe the best player in the game for a period of time before injuries caught up with him. For Larry, it was more playing on that turf in Montreal that really changed his game completely. The 97 MVP, Morneau in 2006, Joey Votto in 2010. Start a pretty good team with those guys, huh? Pretty good left handed hitters right there. I mean, there was a period of time where Walker was probably the best player in the game. And it's sad that. The injuries did catch up with him because he was Hall of Fame caliber at one time. And what's amazing about those three guys is the way that they all hit the baseball. They all have tremendous power in that left center field gap. And as a pitcher, when you know that the left handed hitter can handle the ball out over the plate and they're that big, you think, do I really want to go in here? It makes you it makes you think twice before you bust them inside for a strike. But you pitch Larry Walker inside. You had to. Yep. Swing and a miss. Leak back to back strikeouts. Two strikeouts in the first two innings for number 44. Brandon leads it off and we return. Miller time later in today's game brought to you by Miller Light. Anything cool today is a winner. 
Hey, Reds fans, if a Reds home run hits the Toyota sign during today's game, Jennifer Mott from Cincinnati, a proud owner of a 2007 RAV4, will win this beautiful new Tundra on display at Great American Ballpark. Register for your chance to win at an upcoming game by seeing your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers. My wife, Joanne, sure drives a RAV4, and I got to qualify for something. I have a 1986 Toyota Land Cruiser that I'm still driving. It's an oldie, but a goodie. They last forever. Brandon bounces to short. If you look at this starting rotation, this is the guy that is the wild card that could really help this rotation come together, isn't he? Uh, there's no doubt about it. He has all the pitches. He, he does not have any fear of the strike zone, regardless of who's at the plate. He can cut the ball in. He can change speeds away. He's got three or four different speeds to the breaking ball that he can still throw for strikes and that really gives him an equaliz equalizer against left-handed hitter. Diamond also a north of the border product out of Canada. He appeared in the 2009 World Baseball Classic. Mason J. Bruce here lefty versus lefty. Down at third, Dan Bellino said he went around, so it's 0 2. Mike Wojlinski is your home plate umpire. Bob Davidson at first, Mark Lalo at second, and Bellino down at third. Jerry Lane getting a few days off after being knocked to the ground by that broken bat and the swing of Devin Mezzarocco on Friday night. If you weren't with us yesterday, he did come to the park yesterday. His sister and their family came down to make sure he was okay and getting a few days off. Good to see him all right. And he said to say thank you to everyone around the Reds ballpark. Dr. Timothy Kremchek and the whole medical staff. Paul Lassard, Steve Bauman who were right at his side. And he's going to be okay. Well, he's always been an awfully good umpire and you would hate to have something like that take it away from him because he's one of the guys that you want to have out there all the time whether you're a hitter or a pitcher he's just good two away three strikeouts now for Diamond and here comes Ryan Ludwig there you see the numbers today he's been very efficient early the first time through the lineup he's had trouble in games past Right now what we're seeing from Scott Diamond especially against the right handed hitters is he is starting a lot of the right handers with that cut fastball inside and then getting them out away later in the count. He's establishing inside early. Well, we've talked often about the success that the Atlanta Braves have had in drafting pitching. He was originally a Brave and then selected by the Twins in the Rule 5 draft. You can see why the Braves liked him. Uh, the Braves can only hold so many on that 40 man <laughs> roster. That's right. why they only allow you to keep 40. And you can see why the Braves liked him. He has got all four of the pitches. And he throws them out of the same arm slot, and you cannot tell the difference until the ball gets to the plate. We've talked often about how the Reds have put together outstanding drafts of late, starting with Terry Reynolds, now on to Chris Buckley, and then developing those players has improved measurably of late. But you're talking about 20 years of great drafting for the Braves organization. And John Sherholtz started the mold. And I remember asking Sherholtz once. This is when the Reds were drafting about five to one pitchers to position players. And John said, we draft about 15 to one. So it's not just the players that you draft, it's the numbers. If you draft pitchers, I mean, some are going to fall by the wayside and some will overachieve. But if you get enough and you throw them up against the wall, there's going to be quite a few that stick. Yeah. But you're right, George, about the, the Reds organization and the change in what we have seen from many years ago there is a tremendous amount of teaching going on in the Reds minor league system. We are seeing guys move that 
in quick fashion, not just uh, position players, not just outfielders with a lot of power, but pitchers as, as well as catchers, position players all across the board. The goal is to be sitting on that bench, and the Reds have produced a whole lot of young players that have made their way through the Red system all the way to the major leagues. Here's Todd Frazier in at 270, seven homers and 22 knocked in, had two hits yesterday. This one bounced to the left side. Quick flip, they'll get him by a step. So the Reds get a runner with a walk, nothing to show for it. Going to the third, Alexei Casilla do up. To the 15th when the Reds battle the Cardinals for a three-game series presented by Cincinnati Bell. Don't miss Friday night's fireworks and a weekend of giveaways including a Reds lawn flag and a braided necklace. For tickets to see the Reds and Cardinals July 13th through the 15th, call 513-381-REDS. Visit select Kroger location or reds.com today. George, going back to what you were talking about, about the, the development of young players in the, in the Reds system, all you have to do is look at the rotation, the starting rotation for the Reds. They've only used five starting pitchers all year long, which is phenomenal anyway. To left, back Ludwig reaches up, snares it, a step from the wall. Nice play. Heck of a play by Ludwig. But you look at Mike Lee, 24 years old, Matt Latos, who the Reds had to use some of those prospects that they taught and brought to the big leagues to trade for Matt Latos. He's 24 years old. Homer Bailey, a homegrown product, product at 26, and Johnny Cueto the same at 26. The only guy that has any age to him is all at all is Bronson Arroyo, and you got to have somebody to lead the staff. Don't you think Ron Gardner would love to have a veteran to oh, lead his staff? Big time. There's the pitcher Diamond. Scott, one hit in interleague play. There's Brian Price, the pitching coach, along with Bronson Arroyo. Great to see Mac Jenkins. You talk about developing, you know, and the Reds have promoted Mac Jenkins to the major league staff to assist. He's done such a tremendous job over the years. I mean, much like guys like Freddie Benavides down at the minor league level that have helped so many of the young players. There's a dribbler to the right side. Got him to a way. Well, George, there's just so much to do in this day and age from scouting report and the, the teaching level for your pitchers. And Brian Price has done a phenomenal job with all of these guys. Uh, you look at how much better this pitching staff is right now. This club would not be in first place if it was not only for the starting staff, but also what they've done in the bullpen. And that's a tribute to both Mac Jenkins and especially to Brian Price. 
a whole change of thought process, a whole change of what you're trying to do on the mound. And it's not about just the mechanical part of it or how you hold your curveball. It's about being aggressive and being aggressive down in the strike zone. Revere offers at that and misses. He singled his first time up. One ball, one strike. Fox Sports Ohio and the Reds would like to send out a special birthday wish to Ruth McKinney from Jackson, Ohio. Celebrated her 84th birthday this past week. Congratulations, Ruth. Phillips takes care of it. That's a nice inning. One, two, three for Mike Lee. We're scoreless going to the bottom of three. Mesoraco leads it off. American Ballpark. Very special weekend for Sean Casey, Dan Dreesen, and the Riley family. Very special season as well, not just in baseball, but in football as well. And we welcome to our Fox Sports Ohio broadcast booth, Butch Jones, the head football coach at the University of Cincinnati. Butch, great to have you with us again. Great to have you. Thank you, George. Good to see you, big man. Good to see you, cowboy. <laughs> what a great day for baseball, huh? Oh, no What doubt. a great weekend, huh? No doubt. Great weekend. Yeah. Great weekend. Hey, you can appreciate it. Sean Casey, when uh, he was a high school senior, nobody recruited him. Uh, he sent letters to over 30 schools wanting to just get a chance. And the University of Richmond said, we'll give you a chance. Come to our school. He ended up being an NCAA champion. You look for those same nuggets that you can kind of dig out of nowhere, don't you? Absolutely. We're in the developmental business. And so anytime you can take a player and you see them perform like Sean did and people across the country and, and reach their goals and aspirations, that's pretty special. I know you, Barbara, and the boys uh, are big sports fans, not just football fans. We love the Reds. And so, again, what a great day. And this is a thrill for us. I brought our entire coaching staff. And uh, as I, looks like we may have a, uh, an extra base hit here. Looks pretty good into the corner. Round and first going to second is Devin Mezzarocco. And he steams into second with a two-base hit. Well, maybe you uh, brought the Reds some luck here. There we go. A high pitch up in the zone for Mezzarocco. And he hits this baby right by the line before Trevor Plouffe even has a chance to move. Get to come to many games? Yeah, I try to uh, get to as many games as possible. Like I said, we're big Reds fans, but right now our schedule with recruiting and camps is very challenging, but I'm uh, going to take the most of it. I would imagine that when you take on the reins of head coaching in football, as we see a nice sacrifice by Mike Lee, that's one guy that can do it all right there. Do you go after just pure athletes or are you trying to fill individual spots i've always wondered that because you're talking about makeup you got to have somebody that can do schoolwork. i mean schools is still important i would imagine absolutely 
You know what? It's an entire profile that we look for, from athletic ability to character, obviously to the passion of gaining a college education. So it's a whole process that we go through. It's very challenging, and we try to be, you know, do our due diligence as much as possible. They get the runner to third, infield in. Here's Chris Heise, looped into left. Coming in is Willingham. Tagging in third is Mezzarocco, and he will hold as the ball comes all the way in. Double cut and finally picked off. Good job by Mark Berry, not deep enough to get the run in. So fly ball, no sacrifice fly. It'll be up to Valdez to get the runner in. Teamwork. It's the story in baseball. I mean, we saw it yesterday. Johnny Cueto, a pitcher, still gets the ball down, gets you two runs in in football. It's the same story. Everybody does their job to make you a winner. Every sport is based on teamwork, team chemistry, and doing your job. You had your open house uh, this past month. How'd it go? It went exceptionally well, and I want to encourage everyone to buy their season tickets. You know, we're building the best college football family in America, and we need everyone to come out uh, and support this football team. I think it's a product that everyone in our great city can be extremely proud of. Cowboy, 125 years of football. That's pretty good. I'm, I'm telling you, and not only 125 years, but there is some success behind that 125 years. Am I right? Exactly right. And we're the fourth oldest college football stadium in America and playing historic Nippert Stadium, so we're very proud of that. We're going to be an extremely young football team. We had a group of Navy SEALs in this weekend doing leadership training, and I tell you what, extremely there beneficial. Group to right, sink in a base hit. Here comes Mezzarocco. Valdez has delivered the Reds lead one and up. Teamwork. Now, as you, Teamwork. as you talk about leadership, there's a guy that one of the main reasons that Walt Jockey went out to get Wilson Valdez is he has had experience in a championship environment in Philadelphia, and he comes up with a huge hit there to drive in the run. How important is it for you to develop your older players to be able to be those type of individual leaders so when you bring in the freshmen, they can follow along and buy into the program, and it just keeps coming time and time again. Critical. It's a culture. You know, we talk about a championship culture, and, again, everything is about the locker room or the clubhouse, you know, and team chemistry, and we call it teaching our players the Bearcat way, how we present ourselves, how we represent our university and our great city, and how we go to class and graduate our players, and then if they're fortunate to move on to the National Football League, they do so or in their career endeavors. Pretty good draft for you this year going to the NFL. Really excited, you know, <laughs> to have the opportunity to have four individuals. That's fantastic. Drafted and then five signed free agent contracts. I was fortunate to spend a couple days ago uh, at the mini camp of the Miami Dolphins for an entire day. And, and that was great. And the reputation that uh, we have amongst the National Football League of NFL-ready players is really growing, and I'm excited about that. Zach Galaris, of course, ran your offense last year. You hate to lose him, don't you? We hate to lose him. Actually, I was just uh, talking to him via text message coming up here, and he's with the Toronto Argonauts, and he's doing exceptionally well right now. Can he play in the NFL, do you think? Can he make that transition? I do. Right now, he's in the Canadian League, yep. and he's going through that experience. You know, the thing that's kind of hindering him a little bit is some limitations in terms of stature and size. But uh, if there's anyone that can work through that, it would be Zach Caleros. Flutie and Moon did it. Yeah, <laughs> yes, they did. Coach Jones, I know that, that you are very close friends with Eric Spolstra, the, the coach of the uh, Miami Heat that just won the NBA championship. Um, how important is it uh, with those types of relationships to not, not just to make your guys pros, but to take something from a championship like that and bring it back to your program or vice versa? Well, it's critical, and uh, Eric and I have become uh, great friends, and, you know, to be there and witness game five and then to reach all their goals and, and the opportunity to become number one and world champions, and our team has kind of embraced that. Uh, they adopted our motto, sign your name, and uh, so we followed them, and Eric's going to come to training camp and spend some time with us and talk about, you know, we talk about mental conditioning. Everything is about mental toughness, physical toughness. You know, they say one of the toughest uh, people yet in, in all of sport is a baseball pitcher you know when we talk to us is everything's about your body language and you give up that home run you know your demeanor on the mound and that's so why true. bringing the navy seals in uh was very very big to our program this weekend but you know you can take bits and pieces it doesn't matter what sport we talked about teamwork it all goes hand in hand 
Joey Votto digs in. No balls, two strikes with Valdez down at first. Valdez base hit has given the Reds a one nothing lead. We continue to visit with Butch Jones, the head coach of the UC Bearcats. And you got an exciting season coming up. You talk about Miami coming from behind. You came from behind to win the Big East last year. And you start off right off the bat. Early September with Pittsburgh, then Delaware State, then Virginia Tech, and then of course on FS Ohio, you got Miami of Ohio on October the sixth. Looking forward to it. Uh, first game of the year, prime time, Thursday night, ESPN. You couldn't ask for anything better. That plunks Votto. That you know that's not intentional. He's ahead 0 and 2, and he's digging in, saying I'm owning the inside part of the plate. He gets plunked. So the Reds have first and second with two away. Now to go back with Cowboy, he didn't give up very many home runs, so. <laughs> What'd you do, pay him to say that, Cowboy? <laughs> He's wrong. <laughs> I gave up my share. <laughs> That's an easy way not to give up. I one gave right up there. my share, trust me. <laughs> Especially early in my career. <laughs> you know, you talk about being with Eric Spolstra. That whole intelligent approach starts with Pat Riley down there and I know you spent some time with Riley too as a, a manager a coach someone who runs a program it's just so important the mental aspect of getting together and that's what Riley's put together down there it's all about building a foundation and again a culture and uh, so you look at what Pat Riley's brought to the table um, it speaks volumes wow back to back and Phillips will go on so the bases are now loaded Boy, he was on the money, Cowboy, but here he gives up the double and now hits two batters. Well, it appears that he is uh, overthrowing just a little bit. We were talking early, our Coach Jones was talking earlier about mental toughness, and when things start to fall apart for you out there on the mound, that's when you really have to reach down deep inside, and you have to step back off of the mound. You take a deep breath. You forget about what has just happened, and you focus on what you want to have happen, the positive. And you focus on that pitch at that moment, and you make that pitch. You don't worry about all the rest of the things that are going on. If you do that, then you'll never get anybody out. Now you talk about Eric, and there was a period of time where everybody was saying, if Miami doesn't win, he's going to lose his job. Uh, and now you know you don't have to worry about him losing a job. There's no doubt about that. But as a, a coach, whether it's at the college level or the professional level, you can't worry about that, can you? You just have to worry about your job. You can't worry about that. You can't let the distractions creep in. And it's all about preparing your team. And that's what Eric, if you look around the National Basketball Association, he has a tremendous uh, amount of respect from his peers in the profession about preparing a basketball team. And I thought he did an exceptional job of really preparing that basketball team to win. And we, of course, this year have Bearcat Sports Weekly coming your way right here on Fox Sports Ohio. I know you're looking forward to that. We sure are. Tommy did a great job last year, Tommy Gallarda, and I know he's going to do it again this year. Tommy's the best. He does it outstanding. He's, he does his homework. He's right on the money. Yes, he does. So I love working with him on a day-to-day -day basis. How about, you know, there's been a lot of talk about this BCS uh, quagmire that we're all in the middle of, and Cowboy and I have talked about it. What do you think? Well, I think it's going to be healthy for the game of college football and to be able to crown a champion with a 14 playoff. I think it's going to be great. Left field in the air. It's going to stay in the ballpark, though. Willingham will haul it in. The Reds take a lead on a Wilson Valdez hit. Butch, thanks for stopping by. And the coach of the year last year in the Big East. Good we look forward you, to, to see you. many more years of success and a great year in 2012. Thanks again. Thanks, Butch.
support Boys and Girls Clubs of America, a place where youth can reach their full potential as productive, caring, responsible citizens. To learn more, please visit greatfutures.org slash Fox Sports. Back to work. Here's the number two hitter, Darren Mastriani. The Reds push one across in the bottom of three. Mastriani, Maurer, and Willingham do up as we head to the fourth inning. One hopper down to third, a bullet across the infield by Frazier, and there's one away. Pretty good reach by Frazier. You can see him starting to charge the baseball as the ball came off the bat. He read it perfectly. But when that ball starts to take that high hop, you got to freeze in your tracks and you got to get up in a hurry. That was great. We talked to Frazier after the game yesterday. He said, you know, I haven't felt much pressure coming up to the major leagues. I'm just a baseball player. He said, but I felt pressure yesterday. And Sean Casey told the story how he talked to him before the game and said, hey, congratulations on wearing 21. And he said he spent a little time with me. And I said, I got to do something good today because Casey's here and I'm wearing his number. And he did. He did. Beautiful diving catch in left field and a couple of hits to go with it. And it's not lost on Todd Frazier that he's wearing 21. Yesterday, Sean Casey told everyone in this ballpark, every time I put on the Cincinnati Reds uniform, I knew what it meant. And I always wanted to respect that uniform. And the guy down at third is one of those that is in the same mold. No doubt. Well, I, I think for Todd Frazier, it wouldn't matter if he was wearing 99. <laughs> He's still going to play the game the way it's supposed to be played. That's how he was brought up. And he has done it ever since we saw him on the Little League World Series stage. Tom's River, New Jersey, Little League champions, and he was a member of a brilliant youth program that comes out of Tom's River. Two balls, two strikes to Maurer, who bounced the second first time up. Missing inside. Just like Sean Casey year in and year out his mom and his dad Jim and Joan would always come to spring training and follow their son everywhere. Todd Frazier's family would come to spring training down in Sarasota and follow him and his whole family. His brother signed a professional contract as well. His brother just released this past week so he no longer is under contract. Maurer retired. Strikeout number three. For Mike Lee. Awfully good pitch there by Mike Lee. He has got that two seamer running and he's got the cut fastball going the other way. Keeping the ball down. Hangs with it and so does Joey at the other end. Throw a little high, but Vado kept the toe on the bag. One, two, three here. What a weekend. Sean Casey, Danny Dreeson yesterday coming up. We'll review it.
And I played my heart out because I love this city. And when Cincinnati was written across my chest, I never took it lightly. Cincinnati, and I'm so grateful to be back. Boom! <laughs> There's only one, Sean Casey. What a special Boom. day yesterday, and uh, great job by the gang in the truck to put that together. Great to have you with us, George Grant and the Cowboy, Jeff Brantley up in the booth, Jim Day, Jeff Pecoro, keeping you up to date with pre and post game activities, and an outstanding job they did yesterday, along with Ken Dream Weaver and the whole staff, to put together the hour long pre game and the post game. Ludwig fouls it off. The honor is phenomenal, both for Dan Dreesen, Riley, Casey. It's amazing. And they all feel it. As you could see there in that. That was that was some real emotion. You're not kidding. Sell out yesterday. Great crowd on hand again here today. One ball and one strike. Joining us up in the booth, Joel Luckup providing updates for us on everything in the world of baseball. Jesse Jackson riding herd over everybody. Jesse, thanks for bringing Butch in. Good job. Bouncer in the hole, backhanded by Dozier. Long throw. What a play by the young shortstop. He keeps coming up with dandies, doesn't he? I was surprised that Trevor Plouffe didn't go get the baseball, and he kind of holds his hands out as if to say to Dozier, well, I didn't know whether to go get it or not. I figured you, you'd make the play, and boy, did he ever. Well, Ron Gardenhire was a shortstop second baseman in his career, and he was saying yesterday after the game, he said, you have to like him. He's just a baseball player. A little dirt player that will dive to his left, go in the hole, and make a play like that. Very solid, very nice. Well, you have to have guys like that that will sacrifice everything that they have for their ball club to come up on the winning end. But you also have to have guys that can take one swing of the bat and hit the ball out of the ballpark you're right, you're right. and score him when he's standing at first base after the drag bunt. I think you're I think you're echoing what Ron Gardner would say too, right? <laughs> In those championship years, that's oh, what they yeah. had. And he just has not had his two big left-handed forces, Maurer and Morneau, in the lineup with any consistency at all. Frazier fouls it off his foot. One ball, two strikes. Down in the truck today, Josh Hall, our producer. Roy Alfers, our director. Matt Sigafu, Ziggy dialing up some highlights for us. Lauren White giving us a graphic view of this day in baseball. Anthony, Anthony DeMarco, our TD. Jim Crow handling the audio, and they did a great job yesterday with everything that had to be done. Great weekend at the ballpark. And three more games before the Reds hit the road. Milwaukee comes to town. And this is an important Milwaukee series coming up, Cowboy. Well, this is a big home stand for the Reds, especially after losing three in a row in Cleveland. You win six and then you lose three. You don't want to be on that type of seesaw atmosphere because it, it takes away from your drive to win. You want to continue to get back in that mode of winning series, winning two out of three, regardless of whether you're at home or whether you're on the road. And you'd like to have that power behind you as you go out to San Francisco, Los Angeles, and San Diego. That's a big, big trip. It always is. Swing and a miss. Frazier retired, and here comes Mezzarocco. Follow Fox Sports Ohio's coverage of the Cincinnati Reds with the MLB.com at bat 12 app for your iPhone, iPad, Android, and Windows Mobile. Get live audio, pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit Reds.com for details. Now, on that new contraption you got here, it's pretty slick looking. You can do all that, huh? I can. That's the new iPhone, the 4S. <laughs> It works right along with my new iPad. Actually works with my computer as well. They all work together. So we're going to miss 0 and 2. And you will eventually talk 
Ashley into getting one too. Well, we were both Blackberry people for so long, and she still is. But I was afraid that they were just going to drop off the face of the earth, so I went ahead and made the change. Better being ahead of the curve. You got it. On the fielder off. Mezzarocco retired. Back to back strikeouts. Five for Diamond. The Reds on two hits lead at one nothing. Ohio being brought to you by JTM Food Group, creating great dishes together with the food service industry for over 30 years. By your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers for over 30 Toyota offers available now. Visit buyatoyota.com, including mobile. And by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. A run, two hits, no errors, four left for the Reds. The Reds got their run. In the third inning, left the bases loaded after two hits and two hit batters. And the run scoring hit came from Wilson Valdez. It followed a leadoff double by Benzeraco, a sacrifice by Leak, got him to third, and then Valdez base hit scored him. You know, George, we've talked a lot about Sean Casey and being inducted into the Red Sports Hall of Fame, but there are two other guys that are going in as well, and Dan Dreesen, who was part of that. Big red machine era. And I would imagine that if you're Dan Dreesen, you were probably wondering if you were ever going to get that get that inclusion, you know, because there's been so many guys from the big red machine and that era that have gone into the Reds Hall of Fame. And he was one guy that played a very important part and just now got his due. And you look at John Riley, a lot of that comes from the old school Reds way back in the day. But I would imagine with Dan Dreesen, it is probably a, a dream come true for a finally getting honored in, a, in this play. Well, it is a weekend where there is a proliferation of former Big Red Machine members here. Here's Morneau popping it up in the infield. Valdez has it and there's one away. And you know Sparky Anderson talked about it when Davy Concepcion was here. I'll never forget the night that Davy was honored and Sparky came to town and Sparky came in while Dave, we were interviewing Davy and Davy got up and it's the first time they had seen each other. Sparky had just arrived at the ballpark and in the back of our booth Sparky hugged Davy. And he gave him a big hug and here's a shot to right center field going back looking up it's going back and gone into the second row in right center field. Well after striking him out the first time in fact Trevor Plouffe had struck out in six straight at bats this big swing produces a big run that's home run number 15. 
out to right center. And that's really only the second ball that Leak has gotten up in the strike zone. And that ball really wasn't elevated like the ball that Revere hit earlier for the single. It was just a good job of hitting by Trevor Plouffe going down and getting that ball and driving it the other way. So a new ball game. We're tied at one. And here's Brian Dozier who struck out first time up. And what Sparky said, I'll never forget what Sparky said. He, I mean, he had tears in his eyes, and Davy Concepcion did too. He said, you know, this is my proudest day because everyone else got the accolades they deserve, meaning Bench and Perez and Morgan, so on and so forth. Mezzarocco sheds the mask but runs out of room. He said, the two guys who never got their just due were you and Danny Dreesen. And there were David Concepcion and Sparky crying on each other's shoulder. The true love between them. And I know Sparky is up there smiling today, oh, too. Oh, yeah. Well, now eight of nine are in. Eight of nine of the hitters, I should say, are in from that big red machine. The only one not in is Pete. And hopefully someday it will happen. I hope so. You know, you can talk all, about everything that happened off the field, but what he did on the field, he was a Hall of Famer. Well, with all the other stuff that has gone on in the game, uh, I put my vote to Pete. Came close a couple of years ago. Maybe we'll come close again in years to come. Here's Alexi Casilla. That one to left, retired the first time up. And another one to left. Right there is Ludwig. Got it. You know what? Leak is pitching a gym. One mistake. Cost him. We're tied at one. He's due up and we return. For AT&T trivia question, who is the only pitcher to give up 50 home runs in a season? Now, this is a slam dunk, huh, Cowboy? The only pitcher to give up 50 home runs in a season. Now, if you watch Reds baseball regularly, this is something we've talked about for a long time. Of course, last year, Bronson Arroyo came close to the right. He gave up, what, 46 yes, last year. you got to make a lot of starts and pitch a lot of innings to do that. And you evidently are pretty good, or they not <laughs> yes, you right. that much. <laughs> Chris Welsh's old college coach, Robin Roberts, of course, gave up a ton of home runs in his own right. But you know, Robin used to say, you know, I mean, he just throws fastball for seven straight innings, exactly. and then maybe the last couple of innings try to throw something else in. There's Mike Leake. You see the average at 318 coming in. Sacrifice his first time up. You, you play interleague baseball and seldom are you harmed 
when you, you don't have a pitcher in the lineup, but when Leak isn't in the lineup, you're harmed yeah. because he's usually better than if, if you're the opposition. <laughs> Liner in the right, a base hit for Mike Leak. That is the 35th hit for Mike Leak in the last three seasons. Before that at bat, he was tied with Giovanni Gallardo of the Milwaukee Brewers for the lead of all pitchers in the last three years. Remember on that Arizona State team, it was Ike Davis and the guy we just saw up in Cleveland, Jason Kipnis. Two pretty good hitters, and he still says he was the best hitter of the three of them. <laughs> <laughs> so Leak is on. Here's Heisey. Hit one to the wall in the center and then hit one to left. 0 for 2. Best hit ball of the day for the Reds so far was Heisey's first swing in the first inning. Took Revere all the way to the center field wall. Spun him around like a top. Just missed this one. Got under it. He slams the bat to the ground. It's a high, high pop up to short. There's one away. Whatever Diamond's throwing, he's right on it. Well, what he's doing is he's cutting that fastball in on the right-handed batters and then going back with the changeup and the breaking ball on the backdoor side. Every fastball that he throws in the Reds batters has cut movement. That's why you're seeing the pop-ups or the weak ground balls. Here's Wilson Valdez struck out first time up, singled in a run. This one bounced down to third. Five to four to three. That's a quick inning, even with the base hit. Reds erased rapidly. Going to the sixth. Diamond do up. Station East Coast Subs. Find a Penn Station location near sections 130 and 414. Enjoy all the baseball action while eating a Penn Station signature sub and authentic fresh cut fries. To see your Reds at Great American Ballpark, call 513 381 Reds. Visit select Kroger locations or Reds.com. Thanks to the guys at Penn Station East Coast Subs for the subs on Friday. Uh, Jesse, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think Cowboys sent a new uh, Fox Sports Ohio record for. How many subs eaten on Friday? Is that true? <laughs> what I like to say about those Penn Station stubs is, mm. whoo, they're good, they're hot that night. <laughs> you could do your own show. Who was that guy that used to do that? That was from New Orleans. That old Cajun boy. Yeah, that was a great show. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's off the air now. It was, used to be great. Do you watch the Food Network when you're on the road? Depends on if I'm sleeping or eating. You're usually either doing one of the two when you're in your room. <laughs> the eating comes before the sleeping.
Got a moment to answer our AT&T trivia question. The only pitcher to give up 50 home runs in a season. He's about 20 feet from us right now. Burt Blylevin, 86 with the Twins into the Baseball Hall of Fame. We talk often about it's a shame you know Barry Larkin goes into the Hall of Fame this year and it's a great honor for Reds fans. It's a shame Ron Santo isn't still with us because he would certainly enjoy every moment up there and long overdue for Ron Santo long overdue for that guy. What a curveball he had. Huh? Oh, best in the business. I'll tell you Mike Leak is really starting to get into a rhythm not just today but start after start he threw very well in Cleveland and he's throwing the ball awfully well here today. He's using the inside part of the plate to both left handers and right handers and that opens up everything away from all the hitters and you can see the pitch count. He's getting swings and misses he's getting ground balls. He's just flat getting outs. Fourth strikeout for Mike Leak. And I think ultimately for Mike Leak, he would rather have a first pitch ground ball out than a strikeout any day. Remember years ago when Dave Miley was running the Reds minor league operation and during spring training, and he asked Tom Browning to speak to all the pitchers and Bugsy said, I don't know what I'm going to say. And he said, just tell all these young pitchers how you got people out. And much like Greg Maddox, he started by number one saying, you know, how hard do you guys throw? And this kid says 95, this kid says 94. And he said, well, I threw a perfect game throwing 86. Strike one. And my goal was to get an out as quick as I could. If I can get a ground ball on the first pitch, I'll take it. Too many times young pitchers want to strike out every hitter that comes to the plate. And by the time you get to the third inning, you've run out of gas and you've run out of pitches. That's part of the difference in Johnny Cueto, isn't it? It is. It's part of the difference when Homer Bailey has his great ball games versus the times when he doesn't get to the sixth inning. When he's pitching, he's tough. When he's throwing, that's a different story. Our leak has threaded the needle twice on that outside corner, not gotten the call. Three and two. Setting up there again. Right through the legs, off the second base bag. It'll be a base hit for Revere. Second hit for him this afternoon. That's one of those feelings when you're standing on the mound. You can't believe that you missed the baseball. And then you think about it again and you think, I'm glad that wasn't at my head. What a difference a month makes. Right through the wickets. One away. Leak checks with his shortstop Valdez, and who will cover the second base bag. Is Mastriani. And it's getting late now. They may try to take a chance and move the runner or hit and run. There goes the runner. Pitch out for the Reds, and they got him. You nailed it, Cowboy. Chris Spire put it on at the right time. Well, they, they went with a pitch out, and what that allowed. Mezzarocco to do was just stand up and throw a perfect strike to Phillips at second base. And in that situation, I don't care if you're Billy Hamilton, they're probably going to get you. <laughs> By the way, speaking of Billy, Hamilton was at it again last night, stole four more bases. That brings his total to 87 and 69 games for Bakersfield. Down to short. Valdez. Just did get him at first. Another ground ball. Leak is rolling thanks to the call by Spire, the throw by Mezzarocco, still tied at one.
Baseball's greatest stars battle for home field advantage at the Fall Classic. They'll all be there. Josh Hamilton, Carlos Beltran, who's had a great season. They'll be lined up in Kansas City. The road to the World Series begins with the 2012 MLB All-Star Game, Tuesday, July 10th, 730 Eastern on Fox. It's a big inning right here, George. High game, a run, three hits for both ball clubs. Joey Votto struck out first time up, crowding the plate, hit by a pitch. In fact, Votto was hit, then Phillips was hit. Loaded the bases in the third, but Diamond got out of trouble when Jay Bruce flied to left. That's a strike. Now you're in the six now, and the way that Diamond has thrown the ball, he's only at 54 pitches. You just don't know how many times you're going to get the heart of your order at the plate again. No matter how you look at his numbers, home, road, scoring position, they are immense. Setting up away. Wave that. Got him. Well, they got Joey this time. Staying away on the Mazda pitch by pitch to Joey Votto. Outside corner strike one. Well, that is the, a different pitch, even though it looks the same. And on the third pitch, he starts it there and just cuts it a little bit off the plate. And Votto comes up empty. Two pitchers on their game this afternoon at Great American Ballpark. For 25 years of age, Scott Diamond is pitching like a 32 year old veteran. Phillips thought it was low, then get the call for strike one. Well, you like to have those left handers that have no fear, could care less the name of the back on the jersey. They're just doing their thing. Towards the hole, Blue has it. They'll get Brandon by a step two away. Hey Reds fans, if you're in the restaurant industry, let JTM Food Group help you with great tasting, healthier products for your menu, JTM. The longtime pitching coach of the Baltimore Orioles is Ray Miller. He was the manager in Minnesota for a couple of years, and he's the one that coined the phrase, chain speeds, work fast, throw strikes. Can't lose with that philosophy, huh? Towards the corner, Bruce turns first. He'll hold there with a single. Astrani's got some pretty good speed as well. He may not be an everyday player, but he gets to this baseball in a hurry. As we saw him hustling down the line when he was thrown out by Valdez, he got to that ball on just a couple of hops. One of the few breaking balls that Diamond has left up. Here's Ludwig. Walked and bounced to short. is more and more looking as though it may be one swing of the bat that wins this ball game. Into the corner, rounding second, going to third is Bruce. Mark Berry's going to send him around third. The throw to the plate will be in time, and they'll nail him. Well, taking a chance was Mark Berry. And this time, he held him right last night. This time... The opportunity to make a perfect throw nails the runner at the plate. We're still tied at one.
score all the way from first base. He never broke stride. A double into the corner. And sometimes as a third base coach, you've got to roll the dice with two outs and hope that the throw is offline or a bobble here, a miscommunication there. But the Twins were perfect in their execution of the tandem relay. You go back to a scouting report, and Mark Berry was talking about it yesterday, that the one arm that they would run on would be Josh Willingham in left, who is predominantly your offensive player. But Willingham did it perfectly, dug it out, hit the cutoff man, the shortstop Dozier, and Dozier hit the catcher, and that was it. So, you know, sixth inning, you take a chance, and that's exactly what they did. So we're still tied at one. Joe Maurer bunks one into right field for a base hit, so the leadoff hitter on here in the seventh. And here comes Willingham. Fly to right, bounce to third. Either way, with a double that's hit down into the corner, it takes two perfect throws. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what the Twins did. How many times do you see a short hop? coming to home plate that hits something and then it bounces off to the side and you say oh wow well, they should have sent it. Well that one just happened to, to bounce up. Wasn't a great throw home. Just happened to have a little time. Pass Frazier down into the corner. Rounding second going to third will be Maurer. It'll be second and third with no one out here in the seventh. Fastball in the middle of the plate this time by Mike Lee. And Josh Willingham does not miss that one. He kissed it right on the sweet spot of the bat. Mezzarocco out to talk to Leak. The Reds in a tie ball game will bring the infield in. For Morneau. Morneau, two pops to short, 0 for 2. Third, Willingham over at second. Now the Reds move the right side of the infield back and keep the left side in. And now they move Valdez back. All one. The second Phillips smothers it, throws to first. They'll get the app, but a run will score. Well, moving the right side of the infield back paid off. They would not have gotten an out if Phillips was up tight. They do get a run out of it, but the Reds get an out. Ground ball just within the reach of the glove of Brandon Phillips. And with a runner on third base. That's the only play you got. So going to third will be Willingham. One away, and here comes the guy who tied the game back in the fifth, Trevor Plouffe, whose homer is 15th of the year, tied it at one. Uh, everybody in at the edge of the grass for the Reds in the infield. Well, this is where you really have to take a chance to cut down Willingham. Doesn't have the greatest of speed, but you've got to get the ground ball right at somebody. Hop back here, it'll be out of play. One and one. Another look at the swing for Trevor in the fifth. Fastball that was middle away, elevated just a little bit, and Trevor Booth elevated it even more so. Phillips gets the ball, throws to the plate, and he is out. What a play by Brandon Phillips. I cannot believe he made that play. That was barehanded, George. He reinvents defense every day he goes out there. You've seen him take a slow hopper and barehanded. This is a shot. He still handles it barehanded, 
and gets Willingham at the plate. That's not gold. That's a platinum glove. <laughs> a bullet off the glove of Mike Leake. It was ricocheted right behind the mound. Still traveling with some pretty good speed. Phillips bare hands it and throws a strike right to Mezzarocco who blocks the plate and they get the out. Oh, what so a, big. What a play by Brandon. Here's a swing and a pop up by Dozier. That will end it. Yes, they take the lead, but Brandon Phillips snuffed out what could have been a big inning for the Twins. Now has been brought to you by Cincinnati Children's, ranking third in the nation again in the United States News and World Report 2012 Best Children's Hospitals. And by the dependable, long-lasting Chevy Silverado and your tri-state Chevy dealers. Hey, mark your calendars for July 16th through the 19th when the Reds take on the Arizona Diamondbacks at Great American Ballpark. Wednesday, July 18th, arrive early and be one of the first 25,000 fans through the gates. Receive a Jay Bruce bobblehead courtesy of Chiquita. For tickets to see the Reds battle the Diamondbacks, July 16th through the 19th, call 513-381-REDS. Visit select Kroger locations or Reds.com today. Again, want to remind you that the Reds will be home for three more games before they are away for a lengthy period of time. They play the Brewers Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday here at Great American Ballpark. The pitching rotation has Matt Latos against Giovanni Gallardo on Monday, Bronson Arroyo against Marco Estrada Tuesday, Homer Bailey against Zach Greinke on Wednesday. Then it's the 11 game, 11 day road trip to the West Coast, and then the All Star break. Uh, an important series coming up here, Cowboy. No doubt about it. And not only is it important that the Reds play well in this series for momentum going to the West Coast, but this is also against the Milwaukee Brewers, who are in the Central Division. And they're not, uh, they're not that far back. Not that you can take them lightly. Star to play today. The Reds are the one game lead over Pittsburgh. Cardinals three back. Milwaukee six and a half back. I mean, you remember a year ago when the Cardinals were ten and a half back of the wild card the first of September. And oh, what happened in September and in October. Here's Todd Frazier to lead it off bottom of seven. Two pitchers that have pitched exceptionally well on this day. Mike Leak for the Reds and Scott Diamond for the Twins. Frazier today bounced to third and struck out. Diamond has struck out six through six innings of work. Leak equal to the task gave up a home run to Plouffe and 
a single and a double that put runners at second and third and a ground out got the go ahead run in two to one. Nice to see Paul Janish back in mm -hmm. Louisville. Got three hits last night a home, solo home run his fourth of the year and got a couple of RBIs as well and the double big week for Janish back swinging the back well. Louisville playing Pawtucket this weekend in a four game series in Rhode Island. A run five hits for the Reds two runs five hits for the Twins. Rip but caught by Dozier. Check in the glove make sure it's all in one piece that was hit a ton. Hey don't forget get ready for Reds action 30 minutes before every game with Reds live presented by Ray St. Clair roofing on Fox Sports Ohio. We're with you every day to give you a preview of what's happening in the clubhouse what's happening on the field. Jim Day Jeff Pecoro will be there each and every game for you with Reds live pregame and Reds live postgame. One away, and here's Mezzarocco. One for two, a double to left. He's trying to even it up with that swing. When you are amazed at the spectacular plays that Brandon Phillips makes, but the other part of that play was just as important. Mezzarocco blocked the plate and got the tag on Willingham coming in. Well, he was able to catch the ball with just his glove hand, even though his back was to the runner as he caught the ball. He just dropped right at home plate and basically just covered everything up and did not allow Willingham any place to slide into the plate. He just blocked him totally out. All right, here's Leak. He sacrificed first time up, singled his second time up. Normally in this situation with one out, it'd be a given that your pitcher would be sacrificing. With Heisey up. And they send a runner. A sneak attack, and it's a stolen base. How about that? Nobody covered second base. Great Every, idea. Everyone was looking exactly what you said, George. They were looking for the bunt. Nobody moved. Nobody moved when Leak did not square around. Nobody moved except for Mezzarocco, and now he's at second with a stolen base. Wow! Great decision by Dusty Baker, and it's executed. Now a base hit can tie this game up, and you've got the Reds' best hitting pitcher at the plate. And that comes from not playing National League baseball. Mm -hmm. And usually, if you're used to playing that butt play, everybody's on the move. The shortstop would have been standing at second base, but in that situation, he never moved. Broken bat down to third. They'll hold the runner and get the out. Second out. I mean, if there was a, I mean, there were a lot of reasons why the Reds in 2010 made it to the postseason. They had good years from a lot of people, but I don't think there's any doubt that that year, Dusty Baker was more aggressive than he had been before and got this team to think aggressively and sometimes players will do it on their own sometimes the manager has to force you to do it you need the uh, the situation to do it obviously well the, the Reds led Major League Baseball in going from first to third and that's about as aggressive as you can get and that's one of the things that the Reds have got to work on is getting back to that aggressive kind of play. They're slowly but surely getting back to it offensively. That misses inside. 34,513 at Great American Ballpark today. A lot of the times past the 1 million mark for 2012, pretty good number. A lot of times George when you're thinking from an aggressive point of view it takes those butterflies out a little bit you don't feel such anxiety or, or anxious about yourself 
popped into right long run for Mastriani he's there so the Reds get a runner in the scoring position can't push him home they still trail two to one we head to the eighth. And they take on the Redbirds. Stick around after the game for the Brandon Phillips post game fireworks jam featuring a soundtrack of BP's favorite hits. Thanks to PNC Bank. For tickets to see your Reds at Cardinals Friday, July 13th, call 513 381 Reds. Visit select Kroger locations or Reds.com today. Now, if they're putting together your iPod, what's your favorite music on it? Brandon's got a, an eclectic collection. Country boy can't survive. Hit. Hit play. Bunt goes foul. Casey gave us a little uh, country music primer. A little rendition. Yes, didn't he? A little rendition. <laughs> Tell you, that shows you a little bit of what Casilla thinks about his speed bunting with Todd Frazier that close in at third base. Of course, if you're fast enough and you make a perfect butt, you're going to make it anyway. I mean, over the years, the Reds have had some pretty good bunters. This one pushed the other way, it'll go foul. I mean, the, the guy who in the last 10 years or so is Norris Hopper. Was he automatic or what? He had that drop step with the right foot from a right handed hitter's standpoint and could push bunt the ball past the pitcher right at the second baseman. And there was no defense that I saw from the opposition that could stop him. They would bring the second baseman in, slide the first baseman over. They even tried to swap where the second baseman right. would cover yep. first. The first baseman would go get the baseball. They couldn't stop him. And it wouldn't be odd for him to try it even with two strikes, 0 and 2. And you know, you, you have to think about that this year. If the Reds are independent race and you get to the month of September, do you bring Billy Hamilton up in September to steal a base or tricky hop for Votto over his league? Well done on both ends of it. Even if it's only for pinch running. Yeah. I mean, how important can a steal of second and third be in a one run ball game? How important would it be in today's game? Billy 87 stolen bases in 69 games so far this year Bakersfield. And it's been a long time since somebody like that has rocketed through the minor leagues. When you think of Vince Coleman Ricky Henderson who were in their minor league years were always threats to steal 100. He's going to blow past 100 <laughs> this week. Yeah, Vince Coleman I can remember Donnell Nixon stole yep, about yep. a million bases it seemed like in the minor leagues. Hey enter to win a Cincinnati USA getaway package including attraction tickets and hotel accommodations visit Cincinnati USA dot com slash Fox Sports.
So a diamond hitting here in the eighth inning. He's pitched brilliantly today. He and Leak have hooked up in a dandy. Twins lead it two to one. Beautiful pitch. A backdoor breaking ball, and he put it right on the money. Five strikeouts for Leak. Two away. Back to the top of the order, Ben Revere. And it'll be very interesting you know, talking to Ron Gardenhire after the game yesterday. And you mentioned it, Cowboy, that in probably the best situation in a game where they were losing big, they brought in their normal closer, Matt Caps, who threw an extended inning. He had nearly 30 pitches in the inning, but it was to get him some work. Now, after not pitching for the better part of 10 days, more than 10 days, well, about eight days, eight, 10 days around there, do you bring him back today? I would bet he's awfully sore today. Yeah. So he'll have a decision if it stays the way it is when we go to the ninth. Things stay the way they are. Scott Diamond may get a chance to close it out on his own. Well, he is still. Very low in the pitch count, as is Mike Lee. Seventy for Diamond, eighty five for Leak. Glenn Perkins that closed out game number one, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly. Valdez, quick flip. Got him. So the speedy Revere nipped it first. Reds looking for runs. At the bottom of eight we go. Valdez will lead it off. Earlier in the game, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Light. There you see the plaques for the new, the newly inducted Reds Hall of Famers, and there's the group shot that we saw yesterday. They're all here in celebration and getting ready for the Reds Hall of Fame banquet tonight. I look forward to the day when uh, you'll be down on that field going into the Reds Hall of Fame. It's going to happen. I just hope I hope you're right George. I hope you're right. That would be a. Defining moment for one cowboy. I can tell you that for sure. Uh, I walked down the street by at and Park to see your name on the wall in San Francisco where you're in the Hall of Fame there. Yeah, but I want to be known as a red not a giant. <laughs> I don't want to be on the wall. I mean I'm on the wall in San Francisco but I want to be known as a red. 
You are and always will be. And I told Jim Bowden that and he turned around and traded. <laughs> you and Jeff Shaw have the same story to tell, right? Tell you, I wanted to be here for my whole life. Yep. And I finally got here. I signed a three year deal so I could stay here and he trades me. Tell us how you really feel about it. No, I'm back now to stay. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. That's all that counts, man. One ball, one strike to Valdez with Votto up. Bounce wide of Dozier. He bounces up. The throw won't be in time. Dozier almost pulled another one out of his hat. Valdez hustled down the line and beats it out for a base hit, and that'll bring Joey up. I'm going to tell you something right now. Brian Dozier is one heck of a shortstop. This is a great play, not only to get the baseball, but to get it out of his glove and get something on the throw in the direction of first base. Brilliant and effort. Not too many runners would have beat that out, George. Look at that effort. Just did make it. Credit Valdez as Dozier made that a lot closer than you ever thought it would be. Well, here's Joey. We said it was Miller time. Well, it's Joey time. Strikeout. Hit by a pitch. Strikeout. Facing Diamond for the third time today. Valdez, pretty good lead down at first. That's where he's been all afternoon. Down and away to Joey. And you know about all the numbers for Votto. He's been leading the league with runners in scoring position. He's always hit well against left handers, but he's been challenged today big time by Diamond. In the air to left, going back at the wall, gonna be gone, gone, gone. That's V for Votto. V is an MVP. And very special on this day. Listen to this crowd. George, I don't know that I have ever been around a guy that is more clutch than that man right there. I mean, he was made to look almost childish by that left-hander in two strikeouts earlier, and he just took him just flat-out yard to put the Reds on top. That is a man. What can you say? <laughs> Amazing. What a player. And they just kept pounding him away, 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 and boy, did he react to that. Well, we heard Coach Butch Jones earlier talking about mental toughness. Joey Votto, he could write a book on that. You forget about what happened earlier, the two strikeouts, the hit by pitch. And he just leans right out there and smokes that baby the opposite way out of the ballpark. The intensity as he stepped into the batter's box, the relief as he sits there right now. Joey is delivered again, and the Reds lead it 3-2 to two here in the bottom of eight. Jared Burton up and loosening in the bullpen. And this crowd is not done because when Moraldis Chapman, if he comes through those gates, this place is going to erupt. He is throwing right now in the red skin. Check swing by Brandon. He does go around, so Phillips is retired. First out of the inning. That's strikeout number seven for Diamond. Now Diamond has pitched brilliantly today, and it is no embarrassment to be touched up by Joey Votto. So the question of the ninth now becomes a Reds bullpen question, not a Twins bullpen question. And here's Bruce struck out, struck out fly ball and a single. Here's one. Talk about up the elevator shaft. It is, and Maurer will haul it in. Two away. We 
you just wonder, George, will the Reds send Leak back out, or will they bring in Chapman to start the inning fresh? Well, either way, Chapman is loosening. Leak is still sitting on the bench. Yes. He is not exited. And he's not in a position to where he's thrown. I don't even think he's at the 100 pitch mark. We shall see. 86 for Leak. Ludwig off the side of the fence on the old third base line for strike one. Three runs, eight hits for the Reds. They've stranded six. Two runs, five hits for the Twins. Towards the hole, backhanded by Dozier, long throw. Outstanding play again by the young shortstop. But speaking of outstanding, Joey Votto delivers. Will it be number 54 coming in? Name this the hot dog. <laughs> Brandon Phillips, another gem from Phillips. Barehanded that hot shot off the glove of Leak. Turns it into an out at the plate. Our John Morrell hot dog play of the game. Great by Phillips. Great by Mezzarocco at the other end, Cowboy. Game saver. You don't make that play. The home run doesn't matter as much. Well, the game saver now is the big left-hander out of the bullpen. Aroldis Chapman will take over for Mike Lee. Well, Chapman will come on now. For the 31st time, he's got an ERA of 1.57. He does have eight saves, 34 and a third innings pitch, only given up 14 hits. Couple of home runs. He has struck out 59 batters in the 34 and a third innings pitch. And it would be awfully nice to get Araldus Chapman back on the good page, back in the good graces. And That's how you start it. Pitch number one, the most critical as we've seen him. He struggled of late trying to anchor it down here. 98 for pitch number one. That's wide for ball one. One ball, one strike. Facing Mastriani, who sacrificed first time up, bounced to third, bounced to short. When you're in those closing situations, George, it's not always about how you do when things are going well. It is how you respond to the tough ball games when things don't go your way. Well, when this one wraps up, down on the field, Jeff Pecora will be standing by up in the condo. 
It'll be Jim Day. They'll keep you up to date with Reds Live post game. Brought to you by Kings Honda and the Kings Auto Mall. Visit KingsHondaUSA.com. 2 2. Got him. That's what you want to see from Araldis Chapman. Nice and easy. Watch him come straight over the top. Bam. That's when that ball explodes at home plate. Nice and easy, smooth release of the baseball, but he's throwing downhill. And when he's downhill, that ball just evaporates as it gets to the dish. Here's Joe Maurer, one for three, ground out, strike out, and a single right against Lee. The other day, Maurer pinch hit early in the game, and Ron Gardenhire said he did it. He wanted to get him in before either Bray or Chapman. He had never seen Chapman before. Well, he's going to see Chapman here. Here's strike one. Much better breaking ball from Chapman there. That ball had some depth to it and had some downward action. That's an 89 mile an hour slider. You're looking for the fastball and even a hitter like Joe Mauer swings right over the top. Oh and two. Oh and two at a hundred and two. Now the adrenaline is definitely pumping on one or all this trap Chapman right now. But he's not letting it affect his mechanics. He's staying nice and smooth, keeping that body weight back and staying on that drive leg. Rhythmic chant starts for Chapman. That was a 91 mile an hour slider. <laughs> that one still had good break to it. It was just a little bit flat. He didn't quite get on top of it as much as the initial. Setting up away. Oh boy, you made your living reading body language. He was close to two fastballs at 99 and 102, but he's looked more uncomfortable with the slider. Well, Chapman needs to slow the body down and get on top of the slider, and he'll strike him out right here. One, two. Went back to the fastball. He's got him set up right now. If he throws a breaking ball that's down in the zone that breaks down and away, Maurer will swing over the top of it. Two and two. He's throwing him back to back breaking balls, one that had too much bite and one that didn't quite have enough. Here we go, three two. What you throw on three one, do you throw on three two? Every ball he's made any contact with has been a fastball. And you can see Maurer. He is really shortening up, trying to wait as long and let the ball get as deep as he can. He's trying to do nothing but just shoot the ball the other way. That's exactly where the Reds outfield and infield are playing. Drill the left. Going back, Ludwig at the wall. It clunks off the wall. Cruising into second with a double is Joe Maurer. Maurer was right on that. He drills it off the left field wall, so the tying run in scoring position. Let's see if they'll pinch run for him after the leg trouble that he's had. 
And they will. Denard Span will come in and pinch run. And that hold at bat, George, that's exactly where Joe Maurer was set up to hit the baseball. He was just trying to hit the ball to the shortstop side of the infield. And if he got it on the good part of the bat, well, it was going to be elevated. Great at bat by Maurer puts the tying run in scoring position. The speedy Denard Span will come in and pinch run. And here comes Willingham. Josh today flied out. Robbed of a hit by Frazier and double to left. From the stretch is Chapman. That's a strike. Even though Willingham has been in the National League, he has not faced Chapman. First time they've met each other. That was a much better fastball pitch there, George. That ball was really down at the bottom of the zone. Picked out of the dirt by Mezzarocco, one and one. Phillips trying to keep Span as close as he can out at second. You can see Chapman really trying to. Relax himself, take a deep breath, slow himself down a little bit. Span off second. Chapman to the stretch. And Willingham asks for time. You get out there in this situation, George, your adrenaline is going 90 to nothing. And you have to control that adrenaline animal. You cannot let it control you. That is the toughest part of closing ball games. The toughest part of this Minnesota order right here. Maurer doubles, Willingham, and then Morneau in the on-deck circle. This is high three and one. Now Dusty has brought in the big gun here in the ninth. Mike Leak pitched brilliantly. Eight innings, five hits, two runs, 86 pitches. He's trying to get Chapman to close the door. Oh, long gone by Willingham. And the air just went out of Great American Ballpark. You talk about up in the zone, Cowboy. That's where it was, and Willingham made him pay. Well, we have seen it more than once, George. Big league hitters, it does not matter how hard you throw the baseball, they're going to catch it sooner or later. Upper deck shot by Willingham, and Brian Price will come out and check with Chapman. thing that you don't want to have happen is for Aroldis Chapman to get gun shy with what is going on. This has nothing to do with anything other than perfecting the secondary pitch. He's thrown more breaking balls today than what we've seen in the past. That's a good sign. Now what he's got to get used to doing is getting that breaking ball over the plate for a strike as we saw in spring training. So one away two runs in the twins take the lead four to three and here's more no. Logan Andrusik has gotten up and started to loosen. So the brilliant afternoon of Mike Leake goes by the boards. 
eight innings, five hits, two runs. We talked about it last inning, the decision that is the toughest for a manager is when you have a pitcher, your starting pitcher, pitching well and a closer waiting. On this day, Dusty opted to bring in Chapman. It's not the decision, it's who executes. <laughs> right. Disposes of Morneau, second strikeout in the inning, second out. And as you look ahead to the bottom of nine, Frazier, Mezzarocco, and the pitcher spot scheduled up. Well, the problem that the Reds have right now is they are they are scuffling in that last inning and somebody is going to have to be able to close ball games and if that man is Aroldis Chapman then you've got to keep running him out there and he's got to work on that breaking ball either that or work on getting the fastball down in the strike zone and not belt high. Missing wide a ball and a strike. So now you're back to the question we had earlier with Minnesota. Uh, we know that, and I'm not sure until they come out in the ninth. It's I think it's probably unlikely the Caps would come out. In fact, they were looking at him very closely today on how he felt. He was a little sore. In fact, they may even back him off more. So it's unlikely Caps would come out. I would imagine it's going to be Glenn Perkins or Jared Burton is up and loosening. Well, he's throwing the ball awfully well for him. In fact, the Twins were talking yesterday, depending on how Caps felt, if he does not bounce back after yesterday's appearance. I mean, he may be heading for a stint on the disabled list. Right. Possible. Loop towards center. Back is Phillips. Brandon will get it. Well, the Reds are going to have to come up with some ninth inning magic. Josh Willingham's two run homers given the Twins a one run lead. Frazier leads it off, and we return. Tom Brokaw for Boys in the Hall, the personal stories of some of baseball's greatest legends. After today's game, it's Cleveland Indians Hall of Famer Larry Doby. Boys in the Hall presented by Subway Restaurants, where winners eat.
Joey Votto pats Chapman on the shoulder and frustration as he cast his glove aside. The home run has allowed the Twins to take a 4-3 lead here as we go to the bottom of nine. And Jared Burton will be the new pitcher for the Twins, the former Red. 1-0 on the year, a 3.10 earned run average. We saw him pitch a scoreless inning in the other night's ball game. This will be his 31st appearance. 29 innings, and the amazing thing about those 29 innings is he has only walked three batters. That was his Achilles heel when he was in a red uniform. Drew Butera now into the game. And Jamie Carroll enters the game defensively. So Carroll's at third. Butera, who's regarded as the best catch and throw and calling guy among the catchers on this staff, is behind the plate. That's Sal Butera, the former major leaguer's son. Ball one. You know this is an emotional appearance for Jared Burden Cowboy, who played here and enjoyed his time here. He's pitched once in this series already. But he's in a closing situation now here in a critical game of this series. And he threw the ball awfully well his first year and a half before he started having the injury issues. And that kind of took him out of his game a little bit because he didn't have anywhere near the consistency of work. With the Reds from 2007 to 2011. For him to have only walked three batters so far this year, that is a major accomplishment for Jared Burton. Reds looking for a base runner, and they get one. So Frazier takes a leadoff walk here in the ninth. Mezzarocco is due up, but coming out of the dugout will be Willie Harris. So the right-handed Mezzarocco exits. Harris comes in. And you got two choices here. Number one, you got a lefty righty matchup, and number two, Harris, a veteran pinch hitter and a pretty good bunter, too. So, what do you do if you're Dusty? I think you definitely bunt the runner to second base. Then you can put some pressure on this Minnesota Twins defense, and you put even more pressure on Jared Burton. Burton does not have a save this year. Short lead for Frazier. Harris showing bunt. Gets it down. Carroll gets it and they'll get the out. They'll throw to second and Frazier just gets his foot back in there. He took a big turn. An alert throw by Alexi Casillas. But Frazier gets back in. So Harris does his job. The number nine spot in the order. And you know who's sitting on the bench. They have Cozart, Roland, Hannigan, and Cairo. Here comes Scott Roland. Well, Scott Rowland's had a whale of a week. He came off the disabled list, had two run scoring base hits his first time back in the lineup. Two hits and a double in this series in one game. And three hits and a homer in another game. Tying run out at second for Roland. That misses down and in. And Roland will be looking for something that he can drive into the right center field gap and get Frazier home. Something out over the plate that's down that he can get the bat head to. His pinch hitting numbers against Burton. He's 0 for 1 in their previous matchups. One ball for the Reds pinch hitter, Scott Rowland. Setting up away, breaking ball misses, and it's 2 and 0. Jared, a native of South Carolina, still lives down in South Carolina. 
Peers in for a sign from Butera. That's a strike. Have a left hander warming up in their bullpen right now. Waves at that, and the count evens up at two and two. Top of the order due up next. Holds on it. Did he go? Uh-uh. So we'll go full three and two. Bob Davidson saying he did not go around. Dusty. Saw his team take a lead into the ninth. Now they trail by one, hoping that his veteran third baseman can even this one up. Full count. Ball four. So the tying run at second, the winning run at first, and here's Chris Heisey. Ron Garden hired the manager, Rick Anderson, his pitching coach. I've gone with Burton. Caps not available. Perkins pitched in game one. And he's been warming up yep. for quite some time down there. Frazier trying to get every inch of his lead at second. Heisey loops this one to right. It's catchable. Frazier will come back and tag, but nowhere to go. First pitch swing in, Heisey flies out, and that's your second out of the inning. Chris, five fly balls on the day. A pop up and three fly ball outs. And here comes Wilson Valdez. Now, your goal here, Cowboy, somehow find a way to get Joey Votto to the plate. Huh? Well, that's one of the reasons that I have a difficult time with swinging at the first pitch there, especially after. He's walked two batters. Valdez checks the infield. Don't rule out a bunt here. They're way back. Carroll way back at third. And same story for Morneau at first. I guarantee you Valdez sees that. And he was going for it. So now the element of surprise removed as Carroll comes up from his deep spot at third, even with the bag. Strike one to Wilson. Valdez singled in the first run for the Reds in the third. And an infield hit in the eighth. Proceeded to Votto Homer. Here he's in a hole 0 and 2. Just to get a glove on it and be rolling into the bag by the slimmest of margins. And that'll wrap things up. So the Reds take a lead into the ninth thanks to a Joey Votto homer. But a blown save for Roldis Chapman. Number 16, Josh Willingham there, the hero of the game for the Twins. And they win the game 4-3 to three and win the series two games to one. Another look at this one, Cowboy. It's a ground ball to Carroll, and Casilla was late getting to the bag, and he just catches the ball and dives on top of the bag as Roland was coming in there. You could see Carroll have to hesitate for a moment, but they were still able to make the play, and that is the bottom line. 
Well, our Nissan drive of the game comes in the ninth inning. It's a big swing on a fastball from her oldest Chapman, a home run for Josh Willingham. Well, Willingham is 15th home run of the season. Second hit of the game. It's the difference in this one as the Twins win it. Four to three, our Nissan drive of the game. More to talk about coming up. Jim Day, Jeff Pecora with Reds Live postgame.